guess that this is recording by now. I don't know it's charging. Did you have the notification? Okay, yeah, it's recording now. So, babies, we are going to begin. As you know, we have been talking about like superlatives and comparatives and so on. That's the topic that we worked with the previous week. And we have been talking about some modifiers, as for example, as as. Today, we are going to be talking about some that is going to be really useful for you too and it is indefinite pronouns so let's begin with this question guys have you ever heard something about indefinite pronouns or not no tell me have you ever heard something no and what happens if I say indefinite pronouns? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? What did you imagine with this name? Pronombres. Pronombres indefinidos. Pronombres indefinidos, yes, of course it is that. But let's try to think beyond. What did you imagine when you hear this name? What may be an indefinite pronoun in English? What is something indefinite? What is something that is not defined? How would you say or how would, will you explain something that is non-defined? Maybe they are like the um, um, tacitos in Spanish and it's like when in a sentence you have the pronoun but it's not like she, he, but like you can see that the sentence is like supposed to mean. Yeah, actually it is something like that. In indefinite, that's like a pronoun in general. Yes, we have multiple uh, pronouns. One of the categories is like, uh, like you were saying, maybe like tacitos in Spanish. It is something that you don't say but you assume something that you understand that is there even if you are not saying that okay so yeah it is something similar so today we are going to to be working with this but specifically with indefinite pronouns so let's go and let's see first of all what is a pronoun so Miga, can you please help me reading this slide pronouns a word that takes place of a known person, place, thing. Thank you. So look at this. A pronoun is a word that is going to take to replace the noun, like to replace the subject, to say like somehow. That's in general a pronoun, not indefinite pronoun, but a pronoun. This is a pronoun in general. So let's take a look to this image that you have here. For example, if you have a person, instead of saying I, you're going to say him, her, me, we, he. Like, instead of saying Valeria likes English, you can say um, she loves English, she likes English. Or instead of saying um, we are going to the school with uh, Miguel and with Santiago, we can say we are going to the school with them. Can you see? So I am replacing the subjects, I am replacing the pronoun, uh, I mean, I am replacing the, the, the nouns with the pronouns. Yeah, and instead of saying or to repeat like the same thing, you can use uh, different ways to say it. That's a pronoun. Another example can be, for example, when you say, I like eating hamburgers with Maria. I usually have great times with her. Can you see that I used her instead of saying Maria again? It was possible to say, I like eating hamburgers with Maria. I usually have great times with Maria. But this is like super repetitive, yeah? I am repeating a lot. So instead of saying the name again, instead of using the noun again, I am using a pronoun. So I am using her. That's a pronoun. So questions about pronouns in general. This is pronouns. Estos son pronouns, no indefinidos, solo pronouns. Just let me know if you have questions by now about what a pronoun is. Hmm. 
no questions, please say something. Don't forget that. I don't really know if you can hear me in a good way or not. Yes. No means no questions. Thank you. So let's continue with the next part. That's a pronoun. Now that you know what a pronoun is, that is a word that you can use to replace the noun, that is a word that you can use to replace the subject, we are going to talk about specifically about indefinite pronouns. So guys, from this point and from now on, I am just going to ask you to take notes. Don't forget to use your notebooks. Um, of course, the class is being recorded, but sometimes you don't take a look or pay attention to the recordings. So just take notes because this is going to be super useful for you. And let's go with indefinite pronouns. So let's read this part. Maho, princess, can you please help me reading this slide? A indefinite, indefinite pronoun does not refer to any specific person, place, or thing. It is vague and not definite. Okay, so here you have some keywords. First of all, they are saying that an indefinite pronoun does not refer to something specific. Yeah, so this is the first thing you need to know. When we are using indefinite pronouns, you are not going to be specific. So you are not going to be uh, making or talking about a specific about a person, an animal, a thing. No, it is more like in general, okay? Indefinite pronouns, general ideas, okay? Not a specific. This is uh, something that you must take into account because in that way you are going to recognize it. So if you want, you can put indefinite pronoun equal like general, okay? That's the most important thing about indefinite pronouns. I am going to show you an image and we are going to try to identify different pronouns in this image. It is like, like just an example. So we have this example. If God is everywhere and, uh, sorry, again. If God is everywhere and at the heart of everything, then perhaps you just need to look at everything with an open mind and an open heart. So tell me guys, can you see or can you identify indefinite pronouns here? Can you identify words that are talking about as, uh, about the general things and not specific things? Tell me. Yeah. Everywhere, everything. Okay, in this case, we have two examples. We have everywhere and you have everything. If you think about this for a moment, you're going to realize that everywhere is not really a place. It's like in todos lados, everywhere. You are not talking about homes, you are not talking about the schools, you are not talking about church. You're just saying like everywhere in all of the places at the same time. And what happened with everything is exactly the same. It is unspecific, it is non-specific here. Everything may be a lot of things. You are not talking about one specific thing. So here you have two examples, everywhere and everything. Questions up to this point? I guess no. So let's continue with the next part. So let's read this part. Uh, Miga, can you please help me reading this slide? Any indefinite, indefinite pronouns can be singular, plural, both singular and plural. Thank you. So yes, indefinite pronouns has like three categories. You are going to find some uh, indefinite uh, pronouns just to talk about singular things. You are going to find out some others to talk about plural, but you are going to have some others to talk about singular and plural. I mean, the, oh sorry, I made a mistake here. Singular. Uh, so uh, you are going to find some others that are going to be useful to talk about both. So let's begin with singular indefinite pronouns, okay? Let's read this list. Vale, can you please help me reading the list of indefinite pronouns that you have here? Sí. 
Singular indefinite pronouns include anybody, anyone, each, either, everybody, everyone, everything, neither, nobody, no one, nothing, one, somebody, someone, somewhere, and something. Okay, thank you. So let's go and let's check one by one. Okay, don't forget to take notes about this part. This is important. So let's go. What is the meaning of anybody? Who can tell me? Cualquiera, no? Cualquiera. Cualquiera, yes, it's like anybody. What about anyone? Ninguno. Uh, not really. That's the opposite. It can be, it can be like similar, but ninguno is nobody. What happened with anyone? What is the meaning of that? No? Ninguno. Ninguno. It can be cualquiera, alguien. Yes, cualquier persona. That's anyone. What happened with each? What is the meaning of each? If I say each person, each day, what is that? Perfect. What about either? Creo que también. Es que me confundo entre either y neither. Okay. Either is like, for example, when you say, I want an ice cream. Um, either, I don't know, either strawberry or chocolate. So either is to say like, ya sea este o otra cosa o algo así, okay? That's either. And what happened with everybody? Everybody is something that you really use. What is the meaning of everybody? Todos, no? Cualquiera? Like uh, everybody, no, actually everybody is todos, as you said. Todos, todo el mundo, okay? What happened with everyone? Is everyone different from everybody? No, but Como la expresión en español de todos y cada uno. Yeah, so, so, it's like todos, uh, everyone can be like cada uno, but it can be also todo el mundo. Yeah, everybody is, I mean, those can be synonyms, but everyone can be used to, to say cada uno. So, everyone is going to uh, participate in class. So, I am saying that all of you are going to do it, but by turns, and that's, uh, you can understand that because I am using everyone, okay? What about everything? What is the meaning of everything? Como todos también, pero para cosas. That's it. Like todo, toda, but related to things. Not people, but things. What happened with neither? That's new one. Ninguno. I think. Ninguno. So usually you are going to use it when you are have like something uh, in comparisons, like we checked the previous week. So ninguno de los dos, neither this or that. What do you want to eat? Uh, pasta or lasagna? No, neither. So that's like not pasta, not lasagna. Can you see? So that's when you use neither, ninguno de los dos or just ninguno. What happened with nobody? Take notes, don't forget. Nadie. Nadie, perfect. And no one, what happened with no one? Ninguno. Nadie. So nobody and no one Nadie are synonyms. Nadie. Nobody and no one synonyms. What happened with nothing? What is the meaning of nothing? Nada. Nada, perfect. What about one? Nada, this is but also for things. Yeah, nothing is also for things. Perfect. No, but the things. What happened with one?
If I say one place, uno, what am I I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, it's uno. one. It's just about un, uno, una. Yeah, but this is like indefinite because you do, uh, you can say like one place. Which place? You have no idea. So it's general. Okay. Let's go with somebody. What is the meaning of somebody? Alguien. Alguien, perfect. And someone? Alguien también. Sí, o alguno. The same. It's the same. Synony Those are synonyms. Somebody and someone are synonyms. You can use both. What about somewhere? Donde sea. Algún lugar. En algún lugar. Somewhere. Uh, en algún lugar. Yeah, that is somewhere at the school. In which part? No idea, but somewhere. Okay? And finally, let's go with something. Algo. Something, but also related with things. Okay? There is something happening. Hay una cosa que está pasando. So what? I don't know, but there is something happening. So questions about the meaning of these indefinite pronouns? Did you take notes of this or no yet? Yes, no. Tell me, did you take notes or no yet? Yes. Right. Let's continue then. I am going to give you some examples by using indefinite pronouns in singular. So I am going to ask, uh, I don't know, let me check, where am I going to ask to read? Samu, can you please help me reading these two examples? Okay. Someone got a puppy this weekend. Everyone has to study for the test. Thank you. So look at this, someone got a puppy this weekend. Do you know who, who? No, you have no idea. You are just saying that someone did it. And actually, if we think about this statement, it is true. In which part of the world, we have no idea, but we are sure that someone got a puppy this weekend. Indefinite pronouns with singular. Someone, alguien. And the same thing happens uh, with everyone. So everyone has to study for the test. I am not saying just uh, just someone has to study for the test. No, everyone in general. I am talking about the entire group, yeah? So questions about indefinite pronouns in singular babies? This no, is easy. This is just about general things. I know that you are going to do it excellent. So let's continue. Now let's talk about plural indefinite pronouns, okay? If you realize, guys, the list of uh, indefinite pronouns that are used in singular are like, I mean, you have a lot of indefinite pronouns in singular, but in plural that doesn't happen because here you have just four. So we are going to check it. We have both few, many, and several. So let's check the meanings. What is the meaning of both? Ambos. Ambos. Ambos or ambas. So in that way, you are talking about two things. In that moment, while using both, you are talking about something in plural, no matter what. What happened with few? Pocos, algunos. Pocas, pocos. This is used with Countable or uncountable nouns? If we are saying that this is plural, so countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Are you sure? This is plural. So yeah, it is used with word for both, no? Actually, no, because this is few is used with countable nouns because that's those are the ones that you can say in plural. Son los que puedes decir en plural. If you are using uncountable, you have to say little. Okay, so that's the difference. Keep it in mind. Poco, 
pocas, few. What happened with many? What is the meaning of many? Muchos. Muchos. Muchas, muchos. Perfect. Once again, this is used with countable nouns. Those, those are the ones that you can put in plural. So, for example, you can say, I have many apples. Tengo muchas manzanas. Ok, no se me vayan a confundir y voy a aprovechar esto para hacer un comercial. Sometimes you are confusing much with many. Don't forget much and many are mucho, muchas. But much is with uncountable and many with countable. End of the commercial. So, let's continue. Finally, what is the meaning of several? What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of several? What is that? Like varias in Spanish? Yeah, like varias. So several people arrive to Transmillennial at 7 a.m. Yeah, you are saying like varios, varias, but this several is going to give a connotation of, of like a lot of people, like a huge amount of people, okay? So several, varias, varios. Questions about indefinite pronouns that can be used in plural? I guess no. So we are going to check some examples. Laura, baby, can you please help me reading these examples? Mm, sure, miss. So, examples. Several students went to the basketball game last night. Many football players were tired after the game on Friday night. Thank you, Lau. Fabian, do you have questions, baby? Uh, it's not a question, miss. Can you uh, just turn on the, the chat because... I have to say something to you. One, five oh, seconds. Oh, it is, it is close. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that it was not available. I'm so sorry. So there you have the chat active in English, please. Okay. There you have it. Sorry, Maria. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, guys. So yeah, we are going to check the, the, the examples that we have here. Several students went to the basketball game last night. So if I say several students, look at this. The next word that I have is in plural. Why? Because I am using an indefinite pronoun for, for plural things. So a lot of students, several pronouns. The same thing happened here. Look at this. Many football players were tired after the game on Friday night. So many, a lot. You can count how many football players were tired, okay? But you are using many, you are expressing that this is plural. So questions about these babies, questions about these indefinite pronouns? I just have a little question that may not be related, but can you use like for example, a pronoun that is for like uncountable things, uncountable things? or you cannot yes yes there are some indefinite pronouns that are going to be useful for countable and countable or if you want to say it like singular and plural but we are going to talk about it in some seconds i am going to show it to you you don't worry but yes we have those kind of pronouns okay guys so let's continue if you don't have questions uh, questions, uh, we are going to continue. So let's go with the next uh, part. Let's go with the next slide. And now we are going to check both. As Violet was asking, yes, there are some uh, indefinite pronouns that we can use with both, with singular and with plural, with countable and uncountable. So let's read this slide. Julian, can you please help me reading this part? Okay, Miss. Both singular and plural indefinite pronouns include these indefinite pronouns can be used as singular or plural. It all depends on how it is used in a sentence. Thank you. So, I am going to tell you uh, 
some things. First of all, yes, you have some things in plural, some things in singular, and there are some indefinite pronouns that you can use as I was telling you. But you have to take into account this thing that I am giving you here. So, these indefinite pronouns, guys, can be used uh, as singular or plural with countable and uncountable, but that depends on the way you use it in a sentence, okay? Keep it in mind because that is important. We are going to check it. So once again, the list is not as long as the list of the singular ones, but these are important. Here we have just five. Let's begin with the first one, all. What is the meaning of all? Todos. Todos, todas, Todo. or it can be todo, toda. Can you see? It can be in singular, it can be in plural, but the thing that is going to define that is the rest of the sentence, like the context that you are using uh, with this pronoun. What about any? What is the meaning of any? Nadie. Not really. Alguno, alguna. Okay? Algunos, algunas. Same thing. What about most? What is the meaning of most? La mayoría. La mayoría, like the major part. So la mayoría can be singular, it can be plural, it depends on the context. What about some? Algunos. Algunos, algunas, or algún. I am going to give you an example by using countable and uncountable nouns. So you can say, I have some apples in my bag. So can you see some apples? That is plural because the next part is plural. And apples uh, are countable. But what happens if I say, I want some water? Is it good or wrong if I say, I want some water? It is correct. It is correct, and in that case, it is singular and it's uncountable because you can't count water, don't forget that. But also, you are saying like, oye, you know, algo de agua. Like, not that much, just a bit. So, it is correct too. And finally, what is the meaning of the next one? What is the meaning of none? Nada. No. Uh, no. Uh-huh, perfect. So, it can be singular. Or in can be plural. So I am going to show you some examples with this, like by using this. But first, let me know if you have questions about the indefinite pronouns that you can use with plural and with singular. Right, so let's continue. Let's check these two examples that can be used in singular and in plural, okay? So, Sara, baby, can you please help me reading these examples? Uh, okay, uh, examples. Most of the homework has was complete. Um, some of the student, students enjoy reading novels. Thank you. So, look at this. Most of the homework was completed. How, how can I say this in plural? Because if you realize, this is in singular, why? Because I am saying this in singular, homework. So how can I say exactly the same but in plural? Who can help me with that? Go ahead, who can help me with that? How can, ex how can I say exactly the same? Most of the homework was completed. But in plural, what do I have to change to make this plural? I don't know if it has the same meaning, but it can be most homeworks were completed. Maybe. Exactly. That's it. So most Maybe of the homeworks were completed. So if you realize, I am still using most because it can be with singular and plural, but I have to change homework by homeworks in plural and not was, but where, because this is plural, a lot. So perfect. Let's check the next example. Some of the students enjoy reading novels. So in this case, it is plural because you have this in plural. So some of the students enjoy reading novels. But if you want to use, especially, especially some, if you are using especially some with singular, 
It's like I told you, like, uh, I want some water or that's it, okay? So questions about the use of indefinite pronouns with singular and with plural, guys? Okay, you are quiet, so I guess you have no questions. Let's continue then. So, this is a brief summary, guys, and I am going to give you some time to take notes. That's the reason why I put you, if I were you, I would copy this. This is important, this is going to uh, be something you need, so please take notes of this. Look at this. Look at, look at this chart. Indefinite pronouns, guys. Usually, you are going to realize that indefinite pronouns are going to have these endings. It can be with body, one, think, and where. These are the four endings that you are going to find or to have for indefinite pronouns. So let's take a, a look to this chart. I am going to give you some examples with body, one, think, and where, the endings and the beginnings because you also have different beginnings for this this is like a combination you can begin with some with any with no and with every if you memorize guys the endings and the beginnings you can make all the combinations pueden hacer muchas combinaciones y tienen claro cómo inician some any no every y cómo terminan body thing here tell me in what in what moment I use this this topic? Pronouns. Uh, uh, yes, this topic in general. I actually we use it a lot. Just that we don't realize when we are using and when we are speaking in English, we use everybody, everyone, nothing. We say, for example, nothing a lot, and you're using in your daily life. Like this is something that is part of English even more than some other things, even more than uncountable or uncountable, I don't know. Nobody, no one, anyone, somewhere, something. You use it a lot. However, we are going to do some exercises that are going to help you realize how to use it, when to use it, okay? But please keep in mind this tip and this clue that I am giving you. If you learn the beginnings and the endings, that is going to be super easy. Si tienen claros los inicios y los finales, va a ser súper, súper, súper fácil. ¿Ok? Why? Because, for example, the beginnings, you can say some, any, no, and every on its own. Pueden usarlos solos. And when you mix it with the endings, you are going to have even more. So let's check the ones with some and with body. So you can say somebody, anybody, nobody, everybody. And there you have everything what about one someone anyone no one everyone can you see just memorize the beginnings and the endings what about thing something anything nothing everything can you see easy peasy what about where you can say somewhere anywhere nowhere everywhere you just have to keep in mind the beginnings and the endings once again. Let's read these three things, like these three uh, extra information that you have here. Karen, can you please help me reading these three uh, sentences? The ones that says pronouns. So go ahead, Karen, please help me with that. No? Okay. So let's go with someone else. Jorge, can you please help me reading these three sentences? Okay. And pronouns ending in one, in one or body are used to refer to people. Pronouns ending in think are used to refer or to things. Pronouns ending in where are used to refer to a place. Perfect. So this is your normal view. One embodied people think things were places. 
So babies, questions about this box you have here? This is going to be super, super useful for you. You are going to use it a lot. Then you are just going to make the relation of words, beginnings and endings in your mind. So questions about it? Yes, miss. I would like to know if like okay. there are more um, like beginnings and ends or there are only these ones. These ones. In indefinite pronouns, these ones. Do you have more categories of pronouns because pronouns is like a family? But when we talk about indefinite pronouns, with like the ones that we need here, do uh, you have these endings and these beginnings? Any other question, guys? However, look at this. Recuerden, amores, que por ejemplo está either, neither. That's an indefinite pronoun that is not here in the list. This is like the ones that you can make with the same beginnings and the same endings. Esta es solo como una clave que les doy para que sepan con los que van con el mismo principio y con los mismos finales. Okay? However, I am just going to show you. Tell me. And you can wait in that image, please. Do you want the image? Uh, I, am, I am giving you time. I am actually I'm giving you time to take notes. And in the, in the recording, you are going to have it. But please try to take notes. I, however, I am just going to show you another image that may be uh, really good for you. Give me a second while I do it, because it is not opening. Give me a second while it's till discharge because it is a big image. And this image is, go I am going to send you the image to your emails, but give me a second because it is charging. Let me check the questions you have. Yes, Bali, it is, but uh, as you can see else, it's not like a beginning of these ones. La, la, la lista que les estoy mostrando acá de principios y finales es como para que sea más fácil aprenderse varios de los indefinite pronouns de esta forma, porque pueden hacer la relación. Hay varios indefinite pronouns que ustedes van a utilizar con los mismos inicios y los mismos finales. Sin embargo, estos no son los únicos indefinite pronouns que existen en inglés. You have more. There is actually a lot of indefinite pronouns. I am going to share with you another image. Look at this. I am going to make it bigger. Oh my gosh, too, too, too big. Let me see if I can move this. Look at this. Here you have a list of indefinite pronouns. I don't know how to make it like less big. Let me check. Okay, it's better now. Look at these guys. This list of indefinite pronouns. These are in singular. As you can see, we have a lot. These are in plural and these are in bold. Here you have more uh, indefinite pronouns than the ones that I show you. But the ones that I show you are the ones we are going to be using. Look at this. For example, you have another. In this uh, part, another, like otro, another apartment, is not going to be uh, in, the, in the box that I sent you. Está en la tablita que les mostré. But for example, anything is there. So can you see? That's just a box, a chart, that is going to help you identify some of the most common indefinite pronouns. However, there are a lot of indefinite pronouns like these ones. I am going to send this image to your emails if you want. Would you like me to change this list of indefinite pronouns? Yes, no. Okay, I am going to send it to you, however, because you are super quiet. So look at this. This is an entire list. Let's go back to our presentation. Uh, 
Thank you, Brian. So, did you take notes to this part? Did you take notes to this chart, guys? You're going to have it, of course, in the recording, uh, but it will be nice if you take some time to take notes. Let's continue, okay? Let's take a look to this example. Uh, it is like a bit with a bit of uh, pixels, but let's take a, a look to this example. So I am going to ask, give me a second. I am going to ask Sophie, can you please help me reading this example by behind all of the images? Go ahead. And sometimes I wish I didn't use that somewhere. So not sure where but Thank you. So this is another example of using indefinite pronouns in our daily life. Let's take a look at Snoopy. This is something I mean, do you know how uh, how many people around the world who read Snoopy? No? So let's take a look. Sometimes Specifically, which time you have no idea, but sometimes I wish I didn't have this awesome ability. And here we have it's just that somewhere. What's the meaning of somewhere once again? In algún lugar. Uh huh. I'm not sure where, but somewhere. I can hear someone, you have no idea who is that one, eating a chocolate chip cookie. Somewhere I can hear someone. So for example, if you are here at the school and you are in class, and I don't know, there is a kid that is crying, you can say like, teacher, somewhere, I don't know where, but somewhere I hear someone, cry, uh, someone crying. Do you know in which part of the school is that kid? No, but you know that it is at school. Do you know who is the guy that is crying? No, but you know that there is someone crying. And that's when you use indefinite pronouns. So questions up to this point, babies? Okay, let's continue. I am going to show you, and with this we are going to finish. So I am going to show you some rules of uh, when to use and how to use indefinite pronouns. So pay attention to this. Keep calm and follow the rules, guys. Number one, this, this is going to be read by, I'm going to let you read. So Maho, can you please help me reading this slide, baby? Uh, we use a singular verb after an infinitive pronoun. Examples, everybody loves salad. Everything was ready for the party. Thank you, baby. So look at this, singular verbs after an infinitive pronoun. Singular verbs after, what is the meaning of after? Después. After. Después. And look at this, it is indefinite pronouns, the category, but also some of them are, are an infinity, okay? Look at this, look at these examples. Everybody loves Sally. Everything was ready for the party. So once again, guys, it, this is basically, if you are using an indefinite pronoun in singular, please use a verb in singular, after that, si estás usando un, uh, un indefinite pronoun en singular, pues claramente tienes que poner el verbo que sigue en singular. No se me confundan. Everybody loves Sally. Everything was ready for the party. As everybody is for singular, you are going to know that, for example, love goes with final S according to the grammar rules. Love loves third person. Everybody loves Sally. Everything was ready for the party. Questions about rule number one? If you are using singular pronouns, please follow the singular pronoun by a singular verb.
Questions? So 30 seconds to take notes of these first four. Eh, profe, ¿qué son las reglas? Yes, these are some rules, some things, uh, some tips, sorry, to use indefinite pronouns in a good way. So this is rule number one. Let's continue, guys. Number two, Carlitos attack. Yes, teacher. Uh, when we refer back to an identified pronoun, we normally use a plural pronoun. Examples. Examples. Uh, everybody enjoyed the, co the concert. They stood up and clasped. And uh, we'll tell somebody that a uh, dinner is ready. They have been waiting a lot, a lot of time. Thank you. So let's take a look to the second rule. When we refer back to an indefinite pronoun, we normally use a plural pronoun. So when we are talking about like, what is the meaning of refer back? What is the meaning of that? Refer back to something. Like something in past. Yeah, like to talk about something again. Yeah, when you refer back, when you think about that something again. So let's take a look to the examples because when that happens, you are going to use a plural pronoun. Look at this. Everybody enjoyed the concert. Look at this. Everybody. Todo el mundo disfrutó el concierto. Como vas a decir algo más sobre esto? Ya lo vas a hacer en plural, ya no va a ser en singular, como acá, sino que va a ser en plural. So look at this. Everybody enjoyed the concert. They, ellos, stood up and clapped. Let's take a look to the second example. I will tell somebody that dinner is ready. Le voy a decir a alguien. Okay, who? I don't know. They have been waiting a long, sorry, for the end. They have been waiting a long time, okay? So, once again, if you are talking about this in a... If you are talking about this again, if you are referring this back, you are going to use it in plural. You are going to do it with a plural noun. So, everybody enjoy the concert, the student club. Todo el mundo disfruta el concierto. Ya utilizas tu, tu, tu pronoun. Ya vas a seguir con la oración. Entonces, lo que haces es... Ya utilizan el sujeto, en plural. So, let me check if you have questions, because I hear the chat. No, no, baby. Let's go back to the loves in the, in the previous one, because that's not because it's plural. This is because you are using present simple. This is a fact. Everybody loves Sally. It is a fact. It is a statement. It is present simple. And remember that present simple has some rules. One of the rules is that with third person, he, she, he, that means singular, you have to use a final S in the verb. So everybody loves Sally. ¿Por qué pones este loves así con everybody? Because everybody, si tú dices todo el mundo, al usarlo, al ser un indefinite pronoun, se entiende como singular. Can you see? Everybody is for singular things. Everybody loves Sally. That's the reason why. Not because it is in plural, but because it is a rule of present simple. Okay, vale? Love is a verb, baby. So love has no plural. It is not something countable. So you can count love. Love no tiene plural porque no lo puedes contar. It is a feeling. And in the case of feelings or something like that, uh, for example, if you use, use this as an adjective or whatever, you can count it. No tienes plural porque no lo puedes contar. It's just love. Tú no dices a love, un amor, no. It is not like in Spanish. It is just love. So you don't have a plural form. And that actually happened with the verbs. What's the 
like the plural form of run. Con los verbos no tienes formas plurales, con las cosas sí. Con los nouns sí, pero con los verbos no. ¿Ok? Let's continue. Let's go back to this one. Let's go with rule number three. Let's take a look to rule number three. So, in this case, give me a second. Kami, can you please help me reading this slide? Uh, okay, teacher. We can add S to an identified run to make a positive. Example, they were staying in some boy's house. It is any boy's cut. Thank you. So look at this. We can add a, like an apostrophe S to an indefinite pronoun. This is like the abbreviation of pronoun. So to an indefinite pronoun to make a possessive. What is a possessive? When you are saying that something is from someone. Cuando dices que algo es de alguien. So for example, they were staying in somebody's house. En la casa de alguien. Esto es para decir de esa persona. Somebody's house, so you are using an indefinite pronoun, apostrophe S, to say that it was the place of that somebody, of that person. ¿Qué persona específicamente es? You have no idea. But you know that it was something of someone. Let's take a look to the other example. Is this anybody's coat? ¿Es el saco de alguien? So you, if you are using indefinite pronouns, to uh, be talking about possession, you are going to find, uh, you are going to add, sorry, an apostrophe and a final S. Somebody's house, anybody's cow, a cow. Okay. Questions about rule number three, babies? You can use it to talk about possessions too. Let's continue if you don't have questions. Rule number four. So, Minge, attack. Please help me reading this slide. We use identify pronouns we know as the subject in negative clause. No pronouns with any. Example, anybody didn't come, nobody come. Nobody came. Okay, so look at this. This is, this is important. So, guys, we are going to use indefinite pronouns with not, with no as the subject, just in negative clauses. Solo cuando tienes cláusulas negativas. So, lo puedes usar como sujeto, that means the first thing, just with negative clauses. So, look at this. Anybody didn't come. ¿Qué pasa cuando utilizas el any? ¿Esto está bien? ¿Anybody didn't come? Is, is that okay? No. If I say no, that's not okay. I can say anybody didn't come. Yo no puedo decir anybody didn't come. It is not possible. Anybody, it is not possible here. Anybody would, must be used like in the mirror or something like that, but not as the subject in negative, in negativo, no? In instead of saying, of saying anybody didn't come, to say exactly the same, but in a good way, you can say nobody came. En lugar de decir didn't come, porque es que hay una regla. Cuando tú utilizas any, tienes que utilizar el, eh, un negativo, sea didn't, sea don't, sea doesn't, sea haven't, sea hasn't. Tú no puedes utilizar any si no tienes un negativo por ahí, ¿sí? Al querer cumplir esa regla, uno no puede meter así un didn't come así nomás. ¿Listo? Y menos poniendo el anybody como sujeto. En lugar de eso, vas a poner un nobody came y se acabó. You have to change okay. the indefinite pronoun and that's it. Tell me. Eh, Podrías devolver de... Yeah. Eh, sorry. Can you return the image, please? Yeah. So I am going to give you some seconds to copy this one, and then I am going to give you some seconds to take notes of the next room.
Okay, let's continue with the next one. Some seconds to take notes of these rules. I mean, this is, I mean, I am just giving you the rules because it is important for you to know how this works. However, we are going to emphasize in the use. I just want you to use it in the real life. I am not going to ask you, uh, what is the rule for this? No, I am just going to ask you to use it. However, it is important to know the rules of so the use. Okay, ready guys? And let's go with the last one. And finally, number five, we are going to read this one. Vale, can you please help me reading that slide? We do not use another negative in a clause with nobody. No one or nothing. Example, nobody came, nothing. Okay, and finally, guys, you just have to take into account this. We are not going to use any other, I mean, another negative clause if you have nobody, no one or nothing. El único momento en el que vas a utilizar otra clause uh, negativa va a ser si tienes any. Solo si tienes any. Because any needs someone else to be able to be used. But... In the case of nobody, no one or nothing, you just have to put uh, the, the indefinite pronoun, and that's it. You can continue in the normal way. Nobody came, nothing happened. If you can see, guys, it is in past. Like the verb, it is in past, but you don't have to put any other clause. So questions about number five? Okay, so some seconds to take notes of this. Okay, let's continue, guys. Now we are going to have some activities. We are going to be doing two activities. You are going to do one activity with me, and the other activity is going to be done individually, okay? Like on your own. So now let's begin with the first activity just to realize how to use it. Okay, so let's go. What are we going to do in this exercise? Let's read the instructions, okay? It says, put in somebody, something, somewhere, anybody, anything, anywhere, nobody, nothing, nowhere, everybody, everything, everywhere, okay? Basically, you are going to fill the gaps with the indefinite pronoun that you consider may be uh, good in this case, okay? So let's begin. Let's go with the first one. Who wants to do, okay, no, I am going to select you one by one. It's better, it's going to be more organized. So we are going to begin with Carlos. So Carlos, baby, help me. How can you complete this first one? She wants to leave a space by the sea. And you have this extra information in a certain place. 
So how can you complete here? Which indefinite pronoun can you use? Eh, profe, creo que anywhere. She wants to live anywhere by the sea? Okay. Let's try and check. Actually, it's somewhere, en algún lugar. What is the meaning of anywhere? Who can tell me? What is the meaning of anywhere? Profe, creo que es eh, cualquier lugar, no sé. En cualquier lugar. And what is the meaning of somewhere? Algún lugar. Algún lugar. Algún lugar. Lugar. So, as you have certain place, what is the meaning of certain? Cierto. Cierto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is giving you, uh, this is telling you that it is going to be a specific place, but she doesn't know which place yet. Por eso es que vamos a utilizar somewhere, porque si en un certain place, Es un lugar específico, ella no quiere vivir en cualquier lugar. Ella quiere vivir en un lugar específico, solo que no sabe aún qué lugar es. That's the reason why we are going to use somewhere instead of anywhere. ¿Listo? Ella no quiere cualquier lugar, ella quiere un lugar específico. ¿Cuál? No sabemos, pero en algún lugar. However, oh, yeah. it, may, it may be useful. Si tú no tuvieses esta aclaración, si no tienes esto, si puedes usar anywhere. She wants to live anywhere by the sea, it's okay. But as you have these, uh, these notes, you have to use somewhere. Let's go with the next one. Let's continue with Jorge. So Jorge, number two. It says, she put a space in the box, all the things that she had. So pay attention, th things. She put in the box all the things that she had. So how can you complete it? How can you complete this? Do you have information that may be useful? For example, all. So if you have all here and you are talking about things, which indefinite pronoun can you use there? Everything. Everything? I uh, know. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. This is by turns. Okay. So yeah, it was for her turn, but yes, it is. Everything. Very good. Let's go with number three. Please respect the turn. Let's go with. Don't worry. Let's go with Juan Camilo. Camilo, the next one. Does a space have a phone charger? So look at this note. I don't know if a person has a charger or not. You don't know. So, how can you complete it? Does what have a phone charger? Any worry? It can be anyone or it can be anybody. Remember that those are synonyms, so good. In this case, it can be anyone or it can be anybody. And it's okay, very good. Let's go with the next one. The next one is going to be done by, let me check. Julian, so Juli, the next one. We went a space this weekend. We stayed at home. Anything? Look at this. We went a space this weekend. We stayed at home. ¿De qué te están hablando? Te están hablando de cosas, te están hablando de lugares, te están hablando de personas. Primero tienes que definir eso. So tell me, what is this talking about? People, places, people. People because Entonces, way is uh, people. Pero mira al final, we stayed at home. Siempre tienes que mirar todo el contexto. Ellos te quieren decir que no fueron a ningún lado el fin de semana, que se quedaron en la casa. So, 
be careful with that, be careful with context. Si terminas acá, si terminas con we stay at home. That means that this first part is talking about places too. So in that case, what can you use in number four? How can you complete it? Nothing. So look at this. Actually, it is uh, that one. Oh my gosh. Actually, it is nowhere. It is, is ningún lugar. No fuimos a ningún lugar este fin de semana. Nos quedamos en la Pero casa. La pensé, que es lo peor. Recuerda que cuando estás hablando de lugares, tiene que ser where, sí o sí. Sí o sí. Y si quieres decir que no fuiste a ningún lugar y no tienes ningún negativo, no puedes usar, no puedes usar por ejemplo, anywhere, porque no tienes un negativo. Sin embargo, quieres decir que no fuiste a ningún lugar. Entonces, nowhere. We went nowhere this weekend, ¿ok? So, yes, it, this is just practice, don't worry. Let's go with, um, ok, Karen. Are you there, baby? Karen. Ok, baby, let's go with the next one. Vas a hacer la siguiente. So, number five. She didn't bring a space to the party. So, how can you complete it? This is talking about things, possibly things. So, how can you complete it? She didn't, look at this, you have a negative. It's, that's going to be a clue for you. She didn't bring to the party. What's the answer, Karen? Karen, baby, what's the answer here? What would you say? This is talking about things, you have a negative. That's your clue, chicos. Cuando tienen un negativo, eso les da una pista gigante de lo que van a usar. No. Okay, who knows the answer of number five? Let's help Karen. Okay, let me check, let me check. Vale, tell me, how can you complete it? I think it's anything. Yes, it is anything. ¿Cómo sabes que es anything? Primero, porque te están hablando de cosas. Segundo, porque tienes un negativo por ahí. Acuérdate que el any siempre se usa con un negativo antes. ¿Listo, Karen? Y así es fácil. Entonces, la única opción para hablar de cosas y tener un negativo antes es any, anything. ¿Ok? Let's continue. Let's go with number six. Let's, ok. En este, de, a partir de ahora cualquiera puede responder, ok? You can take the word. So, number six. Is there a space in the room? This is a question. So, is there, how can you complete it? Who can tell me? Freely, you, if you want to participate, you can do it. Teacher, I will say, is there someone in the room? Let's check. Actually, you have a lot of possibilities, porque esta pregunta es muy abierta. In this case, for example, they are focusing this in a question, like in things. Is there anything in the room? Cuando ustedes tienen preguntas, amores, this is important for you to know, it is not necessary to use negative with any. That is just for negative statements. In questions, it is not necessary. But actually, you can say, is there anything in the room? Is there somewhere in the room? Is there uh, something, or I mean, you know, in the room? Is there anybody uh, in the room? Yeah, you can use a lot of things with these questions. Uh, and let's finish with two more and that's it. Look at this, number seven. What's wrong? A space, I'm fine. Nothing. Okay. Oh my God, respect the word. So come in, it's nothing. Look at this. Oh, sure. it's a question. Oh, it's this one. 
No. El siguiente es Anywhere, no me tiran. No. Dani. Anywhere. Eh, de any. We only use the any for for negative negative sentences. No. Any is going to be used, I mean, any on its own and any solito is going to be used in negative and in questions. Exactly the same happens with indefinite pronouns. If that Teacher. contains any, it is going to be used in negative and in questions. Look at, listen to me. Solo negativo, si preguntas. Hay una regla específica para usar any. Cuando lo tienes en negativo, any negative, necesitas otro negativo acompañándolo. Como en este caso, she didn't bring anything. Si no tuvieses este didn't en negativo, es una oración, no es una pregunta, es una oración en negativo. Si no tuvieses este didn't, no podrías usar anything. Tendrías que decir, she bring nothing to the party, por ejemplo. Y en el caso de las preguntas, sí lo puedes usar normalito. Is there anything in the room? Pero solo para esos casos, negativos y preguntas, ¿ok? Vale, profe. Any other question? Ok, then worry. And let's go with... The next one with the last uh, with the last exercise just to finish. So number eight, a space living that house is empty. Anyone? Are you sure it is anyone? Con lo que acabo de explicar? Nobody. Nobody. Uh. Let Let's check. Nobody. Acuérdense, amores. Any can be used just in negative and in questions. In negative, with an extra negative going with it. In questions, it can go on its own, but just in negative and in questions. En el caso de la 8, no tenemos ni pregunta ni negativo. So, nobody lives in that house. It's empty. Or you can say, like, for example, yes, just nobody. Or anybody, and anybody no, no puedes usar, no, ¿verdad? So, nobody. So, guys, what are we going to do now? Right now, I am just wanting to... Practice on your own. I am going to show you how. Each one of you is going to make this exercise. You can do it by couples, you can do it on your own. It's up to you. So, in groups of two or individually, you have to pick a picture out of the pumping cat. What is the meaning of pumping cat? What is that? What is the meaning of Cabeza. pumping? Calabaza. Cabezas? Calabazas. Okay, so Pumping Head is a movie. Actually, it is a, a movie. Es una película muy vieja de unas calabazas que estaban como poseídas. Okay, it is a horror movie. Actually, it is super old. But the idea is that you can look for images from Pumping Head. I am going to help you with that. Look at this. That's a movie and it's really, really, really funny. So you just have to look here. Give me a second because this is super slow. Look at this. This is Pumping Head. That's the movie. Yeah? It was a killer with a head of pumping. The idea is that I want you to take a look of this Pumping Head on, like here, Google. Google an image. Pongan ese nombre y, o si quieren pongan pump, a Pumping Cat Movie. It is going to be easier. And there you are going to find a lot of images. Can you see? So let's say that you are going to select one of the images. Let's say that you are going to select this image. Van a elegir solo una. Let's wait till this charge. So let's say that you selected that image of pumping cat. Yeah, look at this. It is a person carrying someone, like a dead body or something. And the idea is what that with the image that you are going to select, you are going to do this activity. Si no quieren usar esa película, pueden utilizar otra, ¿listo? Es como libre. This is my suggestion, just to have an interesting topic. But if you want to use a different movie, a different image, please, um, please select it. First of all, using the picture, you are going to create five sentences, that means one paragraph, 
no son oraciones separadas, it's an entire paragraph, by using many different pronouns as you can. I mean, as much as you can. Van a utilizar tantos como pueden. ¿Ok? Todos los, los indefinite pronouns que se les ocurran en, esa, en ese párrafo. And the idea is that you are going to uh, underline the indefinite pronouns that you use. And tell me if those are singular or plural. ¿Ok? So that's basically what you are going to do. You are going to select an image from a movie or something, whatever image you want to select. And you are going to write one paragraph by using as many indefinite pronouns as you can. You are going to post that in today's forum. Lo van a poner en el foro de hoy como un comentario. Entonces escriben directamente el comentario ahí y me ponen la imagen que usaron, ¿ok? I am going to give you one example. For example, Oye, look at, look at cojo, the... Yo escojo una película, ¿cierto, profe? Y... ¿Cómo yo haría yo, ese la párrafo? Yo es esta. Te voy a dar un ejemplo, ya te voy a dar el ejemplo. This is the movie I selected, The Pumping Head. That's the movie I used to do, to, to do my example. ¿Ok? You can use the same movie or you can use whatever movie you want. And you are going to look uh, and to select just one image. Vas a seleccionar solo una imagen, una foto, una imagen de esa película. Y teniendo eso en cuenta, vas a escribir un párrafo utilizando tantos indefinite pronouns como puedas. Lo que tú quieras. ¿Listo? Y pues los vas a subrayar. I am going to give you an example. My movie is Pumping Head. So look at the sentence that I did. I did more than five. If you want to write more than five, it's okay. So look at this. This weekend I went to a pumpkin patch. Somewhere one in Alabama. There were many two pumpkins to choose from. Some were, some were small, so some three. But most of them were big. Most, oh. All of the pumpkins were orange. Everyone, five, loves to go to the pumpkin patch during the Halloween season. So can you see, I use as, much, uh, as many as I could. So I guess that someone raised your hands. Oh, no, it's the chat. My suggestion, just five. Santi, look at the instructions. Miren las instrucciones. My suggestions, five sentences or five lines, cinco renglones. Look at this, five. One paragraph. If you want to do more, you can do more. But that's the idea. Select an image from a movie, and by using that image, you are going to write a paragraph by uh, using as many indefinite pronouns as possible. So questions about this activity, guys? Preguntas? Okay. As soon as you finish, you just have to access to today's forum and to post, I mean, write the comment there and paste the image. Me ponen el comentario con la imagen, okay? So that's what you are going to do. I am going to let you the image here just for you to know the instructions of the things that you have to do. And you have 15 minutes to do it because this is super short. Majo, questions? Eh, profe, ¿podemos utilizar cualquier otra película? Yes, whatever you want. You can decide. My example was with Pumping Cat, but you can select whatever movie you want. Profe, okay. eh, ¿nos podemos hacer en pareja? Yo sí yes, you can do it in couples, yes. But if you do it in couples, in the comment, you have to say who you are with. Like, for example, Carlos, you have to put Carlos and Jorge. I don't know, okay? But you can do it by couples. Just couples, no groups of three. Couples. And if you want to do it on your own, you can do it. Okay? Pero lo hace Any other question? En clase, profe. O en otra clase, perdón. Like, today? Today in class. 15 minutes because it is just a, a paragraph of five lines. ¿Ok? Today in class, at the end of the class, tienen 15 minutos para hacerlo. It is enough time. I'm, I'm sure you can do it. So, just post it in, en el mismo foro. Me escriben de una vez en el mismo foro, me ponen la imagen y me escriben la, 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 el parro. By using, according to the instructions, right? By using uh, as many indefinite, indefinite pronouns you can. ¿Ok? Let me check. Uh, Cami, questions? Eh... Uh, teacher, we we have to say uh, the 
chooses the parts in the movie or or no no it is not necessary you are just going to that is going to be your inspiration if you want to tell a different story you can do it the important thing is to use indefinite pronouns but you can write whatever you want it must be related with the image of course but not with the movie just with the image that you selected okay okay so dears please begin working if you have questions or something just send it through the chat okay and i am going to stop recording the class right now don't forget that you can find it later in the youtube channel